What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kinda Funny Games Daily for Thursday, February 28th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? This outfit and having you oh, back in you. the office. I know, it's good to be back. I feel like I've just been on the road perpetually since the middle of January. <sighs> it's been, uh, yeah, it's been rough. But yeah, how long are you back for now? Because um, I keep saying, I'm, we're back on paper right now, I'm back a month. And well, I don't believe it, but that's what it's supposed to be. So I was supposed to be back until PAX East, Oof. but now I'm doing a surprise trip to Los Angeles next week. Oh. Yes. I'm, I have the very lucky, uh, fortunate opportunity to go to the Captain Marvel premiere. Oh! Why? That's so cool. I know. That's really I'm excited. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Are you covering it or what's what's the deal? You're just going? No, is, just is, going for funsies. Which one is, is I can't keep up anymore because in my day and age. Maybe when I just didn't understand things and I didn't know the world. There was one premiere and that was it. But I saw a bunch of photos of them at the premiere, right? Like I already saw Brie Larson walking around in that dress. So there are generally an international premiere okay. and a domestic premiere. Okay. Um, but it really depends on the studio and the film. Sometimes they'll have multiple premieres with in the United States if okay. it's a if it's a domestic, you know. But this is a real full blown red carpet company. premiere you're going to. As far as I'm aware, okay, okay, yes. Okay, okay. Nice. Are you going to meet Brie Larson? Um, probably not. Are you meet I might see Jackson? her across the room and be like, oh my God, she's over there. Yeah. Make your move. Go over there. Talk to her. <laughs> Do okay. No, for yourself. Don't worry about us. <laughs> Don't worry about us. You do you, Andrea Renee. Uh, you were in Washington, D.C., right? I was. What were you so up to out there? I got invited by Ubisoft to go to Washington, D.C. to meet with the team from Massive, who yeah. was obviously created the Division 2. Yeah. And they took us around the city to show us a bunch of locations and learn about them. And then they brought them into context as to why this location matters inside the Division 2. Nice. And it was a really fantastic experience, and I'm going to talk a lot more about that in the Gamescast episode this week. Well, then, that's recording this afternoon. You can watch live on Patreon.com slash games or get it tomorrow on Patreon.com slash games or get it for free next Monday, but none of that matters right now because this <laughs> is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash games with your questions, comments, concerns, bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then tune in to watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and roosterteeth.com and everybody listening on podcast services around the globe today we'll be talking about cyberpunk's e3 plan anthems loot update and more but first some housekeeping thank you to our patreon producers tom bach tj meehan joe beezer trevor starkey mohammed mohammed and blackjack today we're brought to you by quip and harry's but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the roper report time for some news Three items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker's dozen. However, that three comes with an asterisk because as we were going live, uh, Andrew was like, oh my gosh, they're talking about the drifter drifting through space. And I said, what does any of that mean? The and season you're like, of the drifter. You're, I'm sorry, the season of the drifter. Sounds like a carpenter song. Uh, <laughs> They are doing it really it's a does. Destiny thing, and there's an eight minute trailer out, and so you you're going to be searching for information on that. So there might be a yes. fourth one we add in at some point later on. Whoa. For now, though, let's begin with this: Cyberpunk 2077 will be at E3 2019. This is via Joe Scrabbles at IGN, a made up name. Just in case you were <laughs> worried that CD Projekt Red would be joining the ranks of companies that won't be attending E3 this year, we have good news. Cyberpunk 2077 will be at the show. The game's official Twitter account made clear that the much-anticipated RPG will be in attendance. It doesn't say in what capacity, so don't get too excited about a playable demo yet. But after last year's gameplay reveal, we can be sure there'll be more to see. And then Joe, who's again a made-up person, pen name, could be anybody at IGN, writes... Or it puts in the tweet and it says, for those of you asking, yes, we will be at E3 this year. Andrea, what does it mean? Well, what it means is that maybe we'll actually get to see something a little bit less like tech demo and yeah. a little bit more. This is what the gameplay will actually be like. And not to say that that, that giant behind I love closed doors. Yeah. yeah, not to say that that behind closed doors demo was not indicative of the final product. I just remember the incredible amount of press leading up to The Witcher 3 mm. and how that demo changed so dramatically year after year. I mean, sure. I think they showed that at E3 three times Sounds before right. that game came I out. I remember IGN gave a game of the show twice yeah. <laughs> in a row. I was like, dang. So, <laughs> dang, y'all. 
I think it's exciting. I think this has no bearing on when this game's going to come out because we just don't even know. Boston Beer Dude writes into <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, good morning, Greg and Andrea. At least I think it's Andrea. You nailed it, Boston Beer Dude. <laughs> now that CD Projekt Red has said they will be showing Cyberpunk at E3, do you think we will see a release date for the game? Also, do you think it will release on the current gen, next gen, or both? Thanks for all you do, Boston Beer Dude. We might get a release window, like 2020. Yeah. Um, but but an actual date, I would be very surprised. Yeah, I don't think that's what you're going to get. I, I'm, I, you know, Joe makes this uh, thing of, you know, don't get your hopes up for uh, actually getting a playable demo yet. I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that what they show at E3 behind closed doors this year is like, all right, cool. You all get 30 minutes, an hour or whatever to run around and do whatever you want. You know, we're hands off. We're going to step back from it because I feel even though, you know, Witcher 3 took a while cyberpunk's coming out of a, you know basically for square one step one i feel like they've learned so much that i think they're and they've grown so much since witcher 3 that i would imagine this is on an accelerated timetable compared to cd project red uh, rpgs of the past I don't, I don't know i don't think we are have to wait as long as we have in the past and i granted we've already waited a while i guess i hope we don't have to but a lot of the rumblings that i heard about what were going on internally at cd project red were that they shifted focus midway through the development cycle and changed a bunch of the core gameplay loops and yeah. how that game is going to look and function. And that generally adds a couple of years onto the back end. Sure. That's true. That's and true. I think that that's not a bad thing as long as they take their time and the game is going to be great. I don't CD project Red doesn't have a history of like rushing out titles. Cause well, I and think, that's the thing is they don't have to, right? Exactly. They always talk about that. Like they're going to take their time. They're going to make it right. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been very clear about that. As far as current gen, next gen, or both, I think both is absolutely the way they're going to go. Yeah. We're looking to get the next gen probably in 2020 from everything that we've heard so far from Xbox and PlayStation. And it would be really silly for CD Projekt Red to look at 80 million plus PlayStation 4s. I think the number's are all close to 90 million now yeah. worldwide and go, no, nah, we're good. We don't need to release onto that because it took a long time for the generation switch to happen from oh, sure. 360 and PS3 to Xbox One and PS4. Yeah. So if they're going to release anywhere from 2020 to 2021, it would make sense for them to make sure it's available on both systems. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, it'll, I think for me, uh, and will it be, you know, cross-gen really comes down to, you, and I, from everything we've heard and what the rumors are, it's not, this isn't a problem, but like how complicated the, and how different the systems are going to be, right? If it is this incremental step-ups, great, no problem. And I think that's what we're going to get. So I think what does it'll it be matter? fine. Yeah. I, I think you even can point to games like GTA V, which is a giant cross-gen game, yeah. or even a game like Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, another big cross-gen game. The, to me, I think they're building this so that it can absolutely function on the current gen because yeah. the current gen is a pretty powerful oh, yeah. piece of hardware both for xbox and playstation and they'll just push the tech for the upcoming consoles yeah so then what's your e3 prediction no bet no nothing crazy speaking of which are do you want your pizza bet are you cashing that in today are we getting pizza Ooh. Pizza. i am gonna be pizza. here all day yeah, know, right? <laughs> yes Debatable let's, Andrew, uh, right let's this. cash it in today the okay, diet cool. starts tomorrow <laughs> yeah Fuck the diet! <laughs> <laughs> no, E3's coming quickly. I need to get back on the diet quickly. Um, so E3 prediction, you mean specifically about Cyberpunk? Yeah, what do you think? What, do you, what, do you think, what are we getting from Cyberpunk at E3? Um, I think we get another 45 minute plus behind closed doors demo because we know CD Projekt Red loves hands to do off. those. Yeah. Um, hands off. Okay. Um, guided for the masses. And sure. then I think for potentially for Game Critics Awards judges, ah. Maybe like a 10 to 20 minute hands on, maybe longer, maybe even more. Maybe that whole 45 minute demo is hands on, but just for judges okay. or select press. I don't think that that's something that they can give hands on to um, a wide swath. And E3 is clearly like 10,000 members of the press or something <laughs> wild like that. Um, but I think they have to give at least judges hands on so that people can see and feel how it plays. Because at this point, you know, we're pretty deep into the PR cycle. Yeah. And here's one other thing I want to float out there. Not nefarious in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I don't trust him. But do you <laughs> think that this tweet, out of the blue, in February, is anything to do with everything we talked about earlier in the week with GOG.com struggling and that laying people off and changing this thing and that, that maybe mm. Gwent didn't sell as well? And, like, we're talking about, you know, CD Projekt as a developer, but then there's CD Projekt that owns GOG and CD Projekt, you know what I mean, CD Projekt Red. There's, like, the parent company of CD Projekt. Is this, a, is this a poke from them of, like, hey, let's get some good news out there and let's get some confirmation out there? I'm sure for... 
they need to confirm this at some point, obviously. Yeah. People want to be excited, but here it is, grabbing the first headline, doing all these different things, changing the narrative of what it's been for CD Projekt this week. I didn't think about it that way, but that makes sense. It absolutely does. If you want to take back the conversation, release a good piece of news, and anything cyberpunk related will completely sweep obviously. over yeah, yeah. Uh, what's happening with GOG. But I also think that you know we're rapidly approaching the Game Developers Conference and mm. PAX, and so there's a lot of questions that I'm asking of game developers of like, when am I going to see your game? When am I going to play your game? Is it going to be a GDC at PAX or do I have to wait until E3? Sure. And so it's also possible that their staff is getting a lot of those questions of That's like... totally fair. Yeah, of course. You know, like, and so they're like, let's just get out ahead of this so we have to stop responding to each of these individual emails <laughs> and just say, it's going to be at E3 and that's that. Hold your horses. It'll be there. Number two on the Roper Report, Bioware makes crucial improvements to Anthem loot mechanics. This is from Eva Kent over at Eurogamer. She reports, following a bizarre day when Anthem's loot temporarily became very generous, parentheses, a mistake quickly reversed via patch, Bioware pledged to take another look at its loot mechanics and potentially make some changes. In a Reddit, in a post on Reddit, lead producer Ben Irving uh, has now explained some of the, how these adjustments will work following the next patch, arriving sometime today or tomorrow. First up, Bioware is removing common and uncommon drops from level 30 drop tables, meaning your chances of picking up utterly redundant gear at higher levels should be reduced. Quote, this is a highly requested change, and we agree. So that's that, the post states. Another significant alter, alter, uh, alteration is a reduction of the number of crafting materials required to work a masterwork, craft a masterwork. Previously, this required a chunky 25 masterwork embers, but the change will now mean players only need 15. Uh, one of the main criticisms from players has been that inscriptions, bonuses attached to certain gear and weapons, often ended up on irrelevant items, resulting in a player having to craft multiple masterworks to attain a useful combination. Nobody wants an assault, assault rifle with a pistol bonus. To solve this issue, inscriptions will now use now be, quote, better for items they are on. Gear-specific inscriptions will be useful to that item, while all other inscriptions will provide javelin-wide benefits. The cache is that these inscription changes will only apply to the items you acquire from now on. The ones currently in your vault are, st are staying the same. Sorry, hardcore grinders. Andrea, we have not checked in on Anthem in a while, let alone you've been on the run over in D.C. doing I all know. these different things. Where are you in Anthem? How does this sit with you? So I played Anthem all day on launch day. We played yeah. with each other for a little bit, and I have not played Anthem since because oh, well. I... Um, you hated it that much. I didn't hate it. I just on Saturday I had some adult <laughs> stuff to do before we went to celebrate adult with Tim stuff. and Gia. Yeah. And then Sunday I left for DC and I I've been go I've been gone. Yeah, yeah. Came home yesterday and we had to shoot the show last night. Sure. So we actually dig into this quite extensively in, in the What's Good episode that's out on Friday, and I can't wait to talk to Fran uh, about this for uh, for games. Greg, guys. what are you talking about? All <laughs> right. Have you been playing all weekend? Uh, I beat the story of Anthem. Well, then. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, Good I have plenty you. to say about Anthem and loot drops. Don't worry um, about it. So for me, as somebody who plays a lot of games as services, this is par for the course. Sure. And I think what we need to remember is that these kinds of items, you can't really see all of them before you launch. Like, for example, the idea of uh, the masterwork embers and knowing like that players are going to want to craft multiples for this. The inscription thing, though, is kind of like, how did you not realize that that was going to be a bad yeah, decision? I thought it was some, when I was playing, I thought it was something on me of like, oh, man, yeah. this shotgun's got pistol bonuses. That's weird. Are they trying, yeah. to, are they trying to guide me to a build? And it, then, then I saw on the Reddit people like, no, this is broken. I was like, oh, OK. That and so sense. when we talked about this on KFGD, you know, the, the previous week, I had said I don't know a lot about the way that these intricate systems are going to work because I haven't played it myself. Sure. And now that we're a week removed from launch, well, almost a week, um, I've been watching a lot of people's gameplay videos and looking at all the criticisms. And the more that I look and the deeper that I examine it, the more it's like, yeah, they they made this mistake here and they made this mistake here and here. And I am starting to lose faith that they are going to make it right quickly. Oh, okay. And that's the thing that is frustrating for me. Now, as a as I've mentioned on this show several times, I've worked with Bioware. I'm a Bioware fangirl. I was super hyped for this. Haven't finished it yet. But I think that, you know, if you are somebody watching all this drama from the sidelines, I mean, this is clear here. Them saying, oh, sorry if for all the items that you have in your vault already. Sure. It's only going to apply to new items. It's clear that you should wait to play this game, probably mm. until May. Mm. And that's really sad and upsetting for yeah. a variety of reasons. Sure. How are you feeling about 
where you're at with the story? Are you still having fun with it? Are you upset by some of the things that you've encountered? I'm done with the story. So like that, you know, the main story, whatever the storyline they tell you, right? Uh, I found, and I know we'll talk about this at length in Gamescast today, but for me, what I found is, you know, so many people when I was like, I'm ha-, like over the weekend, I tweeted like, Hey, I'm having fun and like ran away like in a joke. Yeah. Um, so many people that like are fired up and mad about it are like, but it's just mad that you're having fun. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what are you talking about? It's, it's <laughs> the dumb. load screens are long and they got a story. It's just forgettable sci-fi and yeah. yeah. And it's like, Okay, yeah, load screens. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's a lot of them. There's too many of them. Yeah, yes, but, we can and, agree. And, but it, and they do go quick enough for yeah, my. Yeah, they're fast. At least they, they're not like. You they're, know, uh, but the, I, they're not like I, I agree. There are too screens. many or whatever. But it's like it was. It did not break it for me. Yeah. And then yes, I agree that the overarching anthem storyline, right? The mm-hmm. thing that is the entire narrative thread of the anthem or anthem. Like when when I was going into the final mission, I was talking to Jen. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm coming up on the final mission. Okay, yeah, this is the final mission. I know because of the trophies. Okay. I'm going through, I do the thing, it ends, the credits, and she's like, what did you think? And I'm like, yeah, no, that was, I did not know what I was doing and why I was doing it, and I did it, but all that said about the overarching story, I still think they nail the Bioware character-to-character personal interactions. Yes. There are so many conversations in that game and relationships you have in that game where I'm like, I really fucking like this person, and I really am laughing out loud at what they're doing and being excited to go do it. So mm-hmm. having finished it, uh, I'm still super stoked to be doing these side missions, to be going out and doing something, to be going and talking. I don't want to spoil characters, but go, talking to other characters, uh, you know, in Fort Tarsus, having them send me out, seeing their stories evolve, continuing that way and, and adding on to that, let alone going into the strongholds and being and like, this is the thing for me with the loot stuff is, you know, I'm what level 21 or 22 right now. So I'm not max level. I'm not doing masterwork stuff yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm playing it. This is why I always say like on the show, you know, and somebody wrote in yesterday about like, you saying you're not an expert at this. What games are you experts at? I'm not an expert and I'm not you or Fran in terms of being embedded in a community. Like, right. I feel like division is going to be the first. I think division is going to be the first game as a service I get on day one. And I'm like trying to race to end game. Like I'm trying to get there and I want to do all the stuff as soon as possible. 40 hours of that story campaign. <laughs> we can't wait. You know what I mean? But I'm going to be all over that weekend. Right. I've already told Jen nothing. We're yeah. not doing anything all weekend. That's what I'm doing. I'm sitting there. Uh, this one I don't mind and I haven't run into this problem, but running the strongholds after I, because I wanted to beat the story first before I did all that stuff. Right. Going into the strongholds for the first time, uh, the first like treasure chest we opened and it just went boom and it was purple and blue. I was like, awesome. This is exactly what I loved about Destiny. This is exactly exactly what I want here in a game where I personally enjoy the gameplay more than Destiny. I'm more, I like the third person perspective. I like the combos better. I like the Iron Man feel to it. And there's and we'll get into games cast. I'm I'm drifting. Yeah. My finish me, me, I want to keep playing Anthem. I'm going to keep playing Anthem. Last night I was playing Ape Out, having a hell of a time. Everybody fucking pick up Ape Out. It's so much fun. But it was that thing of like, man, all right, I keep failing at this Ape Out level. Let's stop and run something. In de- I'm going to go run something in Anthem. And I jumped mm-hmm. off and I ran some stuff in Anthem. And then Jen and I watched the movie and I went to bed. And it's like, that's how I'm going to continue to play Anthem until the division gets here and takes over life. Of, right. Yeah, let's do something. Oh, Kevin wants some help. Oh, Barrett wants to do something. Andy's doing. Yeah, I'll hop in and I mean, play. But that's what a games of service is, yeah. right? And I think as long as you're having fun, then that's great. And yeah. You should keep playing. And it's it's tough because I think that there's a lot of people that maybe got into Anthem not understanding that. Or they didn't like Destiny and then they tried to give Anthem a try. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the the way that those games are structured is so similar in a lot of ways. Uh, Obviously, is that the- Johnny Ace over there? Did Johnny Ace just arrive for Debatable after this? No, that's definitely Nick. Right? Oh, it's Nick. Sorry, it's not Johnny Ace at all. It's <laughs> yeah, Nick right. Scarpina. Hi, Nick. I'm good. Thanks. It wasn't that worth Greg interrupting your statement for? No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> they got into Anthem. Right. After and, not liking Destiny. And, and so and then you see these people yelling about it. I'm like, but this is what this is what the gameplay loop is. Yeah. And I vividly remember loving Destiny and still loving Destiny and having millions of people also hate Destiny. It's a super divisive game. And so I think that Anthem is falling into that same bucket of like a very divisive game um, and people being mad about the way that certain things are. Is it, is it broken in a bunch of ways? Yeah, it is. Did we know that it was going to be broken in a bunch of ways? Yeah, we did. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses for them. I, I And we're going to, like you said, we're going to dig into yeah, it more yeah. in Gamescast because... I'm becoming, I have so much to say. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and I'm becoming increasingly conflicted because while I there's some things that I really love about it, there's a lot of things that I'm like, this is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. And like I've been on many Destiny rants on this show, so like this should surprise nobody listening or watching the show. Andrea's got opinions. <laughs> um, and so I, I just want to acknowledge though that now that I've played about 15 hours of the game, it's becoming more clear to me like where the weaknesses are. Sure. But that. 
those weaknesses still don't overshadow the fun. The fun is still winning in Anthem. Yeah. And I think that's important to remember. I agree with that. But I do think the weaknesses of the game that we'll get into on Gamescast and have a really long discussion of it, they get to the point that I don't feel, and even in the weekend when I was having a great time playing it, right? I never, it never had its hooks in me of like, I can't, I, I don't want to do whatever I'm doing right now. I don't want to be at the grocery store. I don't want to do, I want to be home playing Anthem, right? Like right. the way I'm talking about Division 2 being, and I hope Division 2 pans out, and the, there's a debate of this weekend. Oh, I'm I have lots to say about around. that later. I'll talk about that later too. <laughs> uh, like, I, I played Anthem and I loved Anthem, but anytime Jen was like, you want to go do something else? So I'm like, oh, sure. And then maybe that's the way it should be. But it was even now of just, okay, cool. This is something to do. But the fact that my javelin still, I can't, like, I don't have more heads for my javelin. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, there's all these different things. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. We'll yeah. get into it in the game's cast because I have a lot to say about it. But fun game. Number three on the Roper Report. This is a congratulations to Horizon. Just a little a little pat on the ba- back story here. Uh, Herman Holst, of course, friend of the show, friend of Kind of Funny. Uh, he put up on the PlayStation blog. For, he's from Gorilla Games, if you didn't know, by the way. Uh, he put up a PlayStation blog post uh, like with some behind the scenes thing. But I thought uh, his first two paragraphs were pretty sweet. It's hard to believe that two whole years have passed since we released Horizon Zero Dawn. When the game launched on February 28th, I was attending GDC and counting down the minutes with a group of fellow gorillas and Shuhei Yoshida. Early feedback suggested that we had something special on our hands, but we never suspected that we'd still be receiving daily messages of appreciation from our players in 2019. And yet, here we are, already well over 10 million copies sold worldwide. Sold worldwide. The idea that we were able to bring Aloy's journey to so many players is astounding. Uh, We've been deeply moved by the enormous amount of fan creations you've posted online, as well as the heartfelt letters you've sent sharing your favorite moments from Aloy's journey. So the news there, of course, 10 million copies sold of Horizon. And we talked about this earlier this week or maybe last week about how people everybody wants to create something and have their new ip become trans uh, media and be everywhere and do all right. these things and i cited in that a bunch that have gone wrong or not panned out or that you know you hope whatever but i remember when they said that about horizon that they were like early early a sony marketing person who wasn't the normal person in front of the mic got interviewed like business insider and was talking about like we think horizon is gonna be special and we want to do this that and the other it was like whoa man slow down let's see what this game actually is mm-hmm. it'd be two years removed and have 10 million copy sold it's like well okay you got one right <laughs> you got one right playstation betting on that and that's awesome yeah I, it's probably required reading too if you want there's a whole bunch of nice little little tidbits in there do you see this blog post i did not it talks about how they found the face of aloy uh the baby they used for cooing baby noises and like all these like little like here's just little behind the scenes things that that's aren't cool. like they aren't earth shattering by any means e- easter eggs they put into kills on shadowfall and stuff like real cool stuff i'm excited to see what horizon 2 will be because you know it's coming. Oh, yes. 10 million copies. Can't we wait. Gotta be there. You think we get it? Oh, no, I was going to say, damn, that hurts. This is going to be... F- damn, PS- that hurts. I was about to say, do you think we'll see it at E3? Oh, no. We'll see it at E3. There's not going to be a press There's conference. There's no PlayStation at E3 this year. Uh, Gorilla Games slash PlayStation, if you want to show it at the Kind of Funny Game Showcase at E3, go ahead and let me know. <laughs> yeah, good luck I, with that. I, <laughs> we should just make up a fake one. Do you want to do a live action one? We'll just we'll dress you as Aloy. And sure. Like, That'll be like the thing. Yeah. I'm in. And like, this isn't <laughs> Horizon. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see whatever happens next with Horizon, but it's so far away. Some would say it's on the horizon. Andrea, oh. if I wanted to know things that were over the horizon happening right now, <laughs> like say what came to the mom and grab shops, where would I go? Why, Greg, you would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out today! There's a whole bunch. It's Thursday. It's Switch Day. So if it's just a Switch title, I'm not going to read it until I get to a giant section where I say it's just a Switch title. So let's start with Batloons, Switch and PC, Blast <laughs> Zone Tournament on PlayStation 4, Fimble, Fimble, <laughs> come on guys, PS4, Xbox One, PC, Switch, Ape Out, motherfuckers, yeah. PC and Switch. Oh look, Battaloon is on there twice. Motherfucker, why is Kotaku in big Battaloon's pocket trying to sell this game <laughs> twice for them? Well, in fairness, I pulled these from Kotaku and Battaloons wasn't on the list. No. And then I added it into the list, but maybe it was just because it was out of order. I thought uh, these were in alphabetical order, but clearly they're not. You know, Jason Schreier runs such a loose ship over there. Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> Space War Arena is on Switch. He doesn't run the ship over He's there. He's already running the ship. <laughs> Delta Rune is yeah. on PS4 and Switch. Yeah. Paranoia Deliver Me is on PC. Flashback is on PC and Mac. Wall Street Tycoon is on PC. Nis- 
Nogalicious MSX is out on Steam, and then Fortnite Season 8 has arrived, and a monstrous volcano has appeared. Freed from the Ice King's castle, the now powerful prisoner has brought fire and flame to Fortnite and its islands. Beginning today, pirates, ninjas, and a shipload of new fighters will tussle over treasure, battle with pirate cannons, and uncover legendary loot in Fortnite on the Nintendo Switch system and every other system out there. Bear, are you coming back for this? Uh, I'm thinking about it. What are you? Uh, what are you feeling right now? Fuck no! I got Anthem. I got uh, the Division. I got the, no. You. I love Fortnite, and I'll be back to Fortnite eventually. But I'm not buying a season pass this time around mm, or a battle. Yeah, I, I've got like, I would say like V bucks uh, for like half of a season pass. So yeah. I'm on the fence of like, do I want to like spend like actual money to pay for the other half? I don't know. You're not gonna do it. That's my prediction. All right, here comes, here comes right. the giant Nintendo Switch drop. Everybody, strap in. Everything from here on out, Nintendo Switch title. ACA Neo Geo, the King of Fighters, two thousand three. And Odai, uh, Arcade Archives, Ice Climber, Bard's Gold, Nintendo Switch Edition, Constructor Plus, Crash Dummy, Crocs World Run, Darkest Hunter, Duck Hunting Challenge, Johnny Turbo's Arcade, Real No Super Real Darwin, Monster Dynamite, My Girlfriend Is a Mermaid. Uh, Baird, I need a trailer for My Girlfriend is a Mermaid. Got it. Oh uh, my gosh. Pixel Devil and Broken Cartridge, Void, and then Warhammer Quest. New dates for you. Techland today announced that God's Trigger, developed by One More Level, will launch digitally on the PC, Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4 on April 18th. Then, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is going to be revealed at Star Wars Celebration this April. Ooh. It was announced in an episode of the Star Wars show. An exclusive first look of Fallen Order will debut during a special panel on Saturday, April 13th. The panel will feature a discussion revealing, quote, never before heard details ahead of the game's release, which the host listed as fall 2019. The game follows a Padawan that survived Order 66 and takes place shortly after the events of Revenge of the Sith. And that's really the only details that we have about this game. So more details is literally any detail. Are you mad that you got scooped? Because you broke this news when you sat down next to Vince at the EA conference, right? I don't know if I, I would call me getting the scoop. Up uh, until right now, you were, you were the leader of the Star Wars Fallen Jedi Order news. I can't wait. That sounds awesome. That's um, a good pitch and I hope, you know, Respawn nails it. Yeah, and you know, the the host of the Star Wars show, friend of the show, Anthony Carboni. Never heard of him. That guy. Never heard of him. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, Jeff Kanata's co-host. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tony, we call him around here. Zing. Little Tony. Little Tony. No, Shout we love Carboni. We do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you brought up My Girlfriend is a Mermaid and it is not what I was expecting. You it wanna, was exactly what I was you expecting. You want to toss it up for everybody here? Because yeah, I was expecting Mermaid. I was expecting like a little indie weird game where there's a mermaid swimming around and I got to do something and we're out in the and water. Instead, it's anime, which is not surprising. It's, yeah, it's, it's, well, okay. Oh, well, there's, whoa, well, okay, okay, whoa, okay. Well, okay. Hey, what? You no. didn't do it. You didn't do it. What do you want? Um, I mean, uh, is it a visual <laughs> novel? Oh, there, okay, there was the, there was a, at least a mermaid Was for he going to punch her? It looked like he was going to strike her. You know what? That's how you get people. Oh, there's multiple mermaids for us to befriend. Also, I love that the, my girlfriend is a mermaid has the exclamation point and question mark in the title. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Valley is coming to Nintendo Switch on uh, March 7th. Uh, PlayStation VR exclusive Ghost Giant from Zoink will launch digitally on April 16th. And then Mario Tennis Aces is getting an update with new characters. Kamek will come in April. And Dry Bones will come in time. May. Uh, MyNintendoNews.com writes, however, this is only the case if you participate in online tournaments during those months. If you don't, you'll have to wait a little longer to play as them. And that seems to be all the news we have at the moment. But kind of Funny.com slash you're wrong if you know more than me. Barrett Courtney stepping up to the mic. You might remember Barrett Courtney and Mario Tennis Aces from when Andy embarrassed Barrett when Barrett worked at IGN. He did, Barrett did an IGN stream and said he was really good, invited Andy Cortez on, and Andy just crushed him so bad that IGN fired Barrett, and we felt so bad we had to hire him They also here. had to stop the stream. Remember that? I do remember that. What do you got, Barrett? Fuck you, Greg. Um, I was going to bring up gameplay for this uh, mermaid game. But uh, in the gameplay, there's a lot of suggested nudity in it. Okay. So oh, I, I assume it's a visual novel, positive, sure. like dating sim type of thing. Well, pour one out for it because this is the kind of game that would have totally come to the PlayStation Vita, but it's just on the Nintendo Switch now. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Thanks for discontinuing everything, PlayStation. You got any? What? Have you found out your destiny news? Is that how's that work? No, um, so I did find one article, but I need to reopen the window. I just I got a link from one blonde nerd, Brittany Brombacher. About five podcasts for kids to improve English. It's an Italian website. And guess who's listed? What's, What's Good, good games? games. Yeah. <laughs> 
God. <laughs> like, wait, what? God, and there's a whole, there's a generation of Italian children listening to Brit being like, that's how we should talk. We shouldn't eat salads and we should only drink whiskey. Time for reader mail. But first, I'm going to tell you about our sponsors. First up is Quip. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth. Yes, most of us don't do it pop, 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 properly. We hear kind of funny too because we love Quip toothbrushes. Uh, we didn't know we should be brushing our teeth for two minutes every time, but Quip's built-in two-minute timer pulses every 30 seconds to remind you to switch sides and help you clean your mouth evenly. Uh, as you all know, Nick stole the one that came in here. I bought one. Tim bought one. I love mine. I've been using it. Uh, uh, this is the first time we've had it. This is like the month I've had it, and I really, really enjoy it. And I do notice a difference in my teeth. I just brought mine to D.C. Stuck it to the mirror in the hotel. The multi-use cover works as a stand, <laughs> masks to mirrors, and slides over your bristles to pack and protect your quip on the go. Plus, there are no wires or clunky chargers. It runs on three months on a single charge. Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. A friendly reminder of when it's time to refresh and stay committed to your oral health. That's why we love Quip and why they're backed by 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash games right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash games. Up next, it's Harry's. Let's talk about shaving. Harry's founders were tired of paying for razors that were overpriced and overdesigned. They knew a great shave doesn't come with gimmicks like vibrating heads, flex balls, or handles that looks like spaceships. Tactics that the leading brand has been using to raise prices for decades. They found that by combining a simple, clean design with quality, durable blades at a fair price, they've blown up. Tim uses them. He loves trimming that trademark Tim Tam beard with Harry's and getting the blades delivered to his door. <laughs> Join the 10 million who have tried Harry's. Claim your trial offer by going to harrys.com slash games daily. Uh, Harry's replacement cartridges are just $2 each. That's half the price of the Gillette Fusion Pro Shield. All Harry's blades come with a 100% quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let them know and they'll give you a full refund. Get a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave, like the weighted ergonomic handle, five blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade, Rich lathering shave gel travel blade cover. Listeners of my show can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash games daily. Make sure you go to harrys, H A R R Y S dot com slash games daily to redeem your offer and let them know I sent you to support the show. Did an airplane just crash through the window? Yep. Huh. All right. Didn't see I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that one coming. Everything's fine. EJ writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny. Games. Actually, you know what, EJ? Hold on. I'm going to put you on the back burner for one second. I forgot that I wanted to transition here. Uh, CP writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hi, team. Now that Dry Bones is confirmed to be in Mario Tennis Aces, a game that Andy beat Barrett at so badly, IGN fired Barrett. Is this enough to bring wow. you back to the game, Greg, or are you a fake Dry Bones fan? On a more serious note, how do you feel about the way Nintendo have handled Mario Tennis Aces in general? I feel like new characters are all well and good, but doesn't make the game feel any less empty. Keep up the top tier shows, Chris in London X. Uh, no, I will not be coming back. They've added Dry Bones. I love Dry Bones. Everybody knows that. But Mario Tennis came and didn't do what I needed it to do. Did you play any of it? Mario Tennis Aces? Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, that was the thing. I wanted a really awesome story mode. Bear, you've played a lot of it. Yeah, I played like, God, 60 hours of that game, just like obsessed with like the online tournaments and stuff and mm -hmm. uh, getting like the winning the championships and all that stuff. Um, and I think a lot of that game was uh, based on its online stuff. And I feel like that was like after Splatoon 2, that was one of the first like core Nintendo games to be based off of that. And the servers were just so bad that it was just impossible and the characters were not balanced at all. Um, and so they haven't fixed a lot of that stuff. Like they nerfed Bowser Jr. a little bit, but then there started being problems with uh, Waluigi and all that stuff. So, really? Um, they have been inconsistent on working on that front, which I feel is why a lot of people dropped off really fast. Um, and yeah, the story mode was just not great. So. Yeah, that was yeah. what I wanted out of it was a story mode like Hot Shots Tennis, where I'd go through, earn yeah. items, do these things, and like not getting that, I was like, well, I don't want to do this really. And then I was never, since I didn't do that, and I jumped online, and people were just kicking me. Yeah, Andy, Andy yeah. just kicked the shit out of everybody here, and I was like, well, yeah. this isn't even fun to play. Yeah, and then he told me the secret of always play as Bowser Jr., because at the time he was just so OP. Yeah. Um, someone who has been playing uh, Mario Tennis uh, lately in the story mode is Alyssa, and she's been getting very, very frustrated because right. the difficulty spot in random matches was just too, is getting ridiculous for her. Gotcha. But she's still enjoying it. 
and okay. likes the challenge. Yeah, so for me, I've moved on. Old game is old. Maybe the next one will be more I want to like. You know what I mean? Uh, in all seriousness, the nanobiologist writes in to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. It says, Barrett wasn't fired from IGN. He resigned in disgrace after losing horribly to Andy. Great, <laughs> great correction, nanobiologist. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you for correcting that. Right there. Back to EJ, Andrea, and Renee. Yes. Uh, they wrote in to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and said, did you see that sexy work of art that is the limited edition PlayStation 4 Pro for the Sekiro? Am I saying that right, everybody? Mm -hmm. Sekiro? In case yeah, you like... haven't seen it, I have oh, just thank pulled you. it I have for it. you. Can you maximize it here? Yes. Or actually, you know what? Are you, uh, Send it control. Yeah, I was, well, he, she doesn't, she's not on our Slack, right? Oh, man, that is actually sexy. So um, maybe we should pull it up so people can take yeah, a look just at do it. A, a, if you do Sekiro PlayStation 4 Pro. You have to do limited because otherwise you'll get weird. Like you'll get like oh, box like art. And stuff? So yeah. Oh, okay. um, so do yeah, Sekiro limited edition PS4 Pro. I'm going to so, keep reading. Hold on. Yeah. Keep reading. Okay. Did you see that work about the limited edition Pro? Uh, I've never thought about buying a PlayStation 4 Pro and I never cared for a limited edition console. Until I saw that Sekiro PlayStation 4. Oh, I immediately try to pre-order, and it's basically a fucking raffle. Are you kidding me? I can only get one if I get a golden chopstick? Uh, I assume, kind of funny, has talked about this before, but why make limited edition consoles so limited? Yes, I get that they may cost more money to make, demand, etc., etc., but there are people like me who are willing to spend five to six hundred dollars without a second thought on a Sekiro PlayStation 4 Pro. Am I saying it right, too? Are we sure about this? Sekiro, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's it. That's this it. Is so Throw it dope. up. Yeah. Holy shit. If you're at, so hold on. Let me finish this. Leave it up, but let me finish the statement, then we'll describe it for an audio listener. But I can't get one, not spending my money. A regular, four, a regular PlayStation 4 Pro is what? $400 or less? Don't ever plan on buying one unless my OG PS4 dies. Sony could easily sell a lot of these Sekiro PlayStation 4 Pros. I thought corporations <laughs> loved money. So if you are an, uh, an audio listener, yeah, uh, Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice has a limited edition PlayStation 4 Pro that looks like a crate. It looks like a wooden crate with some blood splattered on it. I mean, it, I'm not putting it down. It looks awesome. And then it's got uh, Japanese characters on it, which I assume spell Sekiro. I'm I, not, I think it's supposed to be the screen doors. You know, the, the little... Oh, doors. see, the rope over it yeah, gave me yeah, like... Yeah, a, but you're right. You're right. It's yeah. supposed to be... Uh, what do they call those? The sliding doors in... Uh, Space saver doors. Spa no, no, no. That's not what they call <laughs> the, the, the room dividers? Yeah, yeah, the screens, like you, you know. In, I don't know what the official name for it, it is. Kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. It looks like it's canvas between them and then uh, like little flowers or leaves. It's some sort of drawing on them, which is typical of that. Juan Mel Vet. Juan Ma Mal Juan. You got and it. Kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong is saying uh, Sekiro is Sakiro, not Sakiro. No, nor Sakiro. So Sekiro. Sekiro. But now I'm just um, going to say Sekiro the rest of my life, and I'm sorry. That's how it's got to be, guys. So here's the thing about this. I've been looking into the Reddit thread, sure. uh, the subreddit for um, Sekiro, and they say that there's only one person available per country that can win in this raffle, mm -hmm. and that you have to go through the Netherlands site Game Mania. Okay. And I'm like, I get that this console is really difficult to make. And that if you're only going to do like a dozen of them, but why make it so weirdly region specific to a territory that's so small? Yeah. I mean, I love the Netherlands. It's a great place to visit. But no, they suck. But like, what? Why? If anything, you would think it would be local to Japan. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I bet if we were to dial into it, there's some weird business tax reason. Or there's somebody's, be some giveaway. somebody's subsidizing the cost. Some rules and giveaways and all that stuff. So we're dealing with multiple things here, EJ, right? And thank you, Andrea, for actually going through. I thought that it was just like, oh, they must have limited it to this. It's a giveaway raffle thing. So that's a completely right. different ball of wax from the regular, hey, we're doing the 20th anniversary PlayStation 4 or uh, the 500 million units sold limited edition PlayStation 4. Right. And to be clear, like this wouldn't just be a five or $600 PS4 Pro. It yeah. would probably be like an 800 or or $1,000. Right. PS4 Pro, the amount of extra stuff that they've put on top of there and how they have to craft it around the components and make sure the airflow vents aren't blocked and all of that. Yeah. Like Yeah, that looks super custom. That's oh, not yeah. that's not like, hey, we just made it clear. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, and even then. So like for that, let's eliminate that. That's a, a PR stunt. That's a way to get people excited. That's a way to get a headline of whatever it's going to be. 12 people are going to win these things in all of the world or whatever. Yeah, the I, thing. I can't get a number here for how many total there are. I'm sure... Like I tried to get into the Game Mania website to see like what the like the rules are, but obviously it's all in Dutch, <laughs> and so I'm trying to <laughs> trying to translate it, but I can't find out where it is. So uh, maybe if um, someone in kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, 
is able to take a look at the rules around the contest and let us know exactly how many of these exist. Nanobiologist chimes in and you're wrong. A whole bunch of people have told us what the doors are called. He calls out the description from Dual Shockers, which includes the name of the doors. But it, it, if you're an audio listener, this glorious console is fashioned in a dark bamboo slash wooden look, giving it a rich, earthy finish. You'll also notice that Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, is artfully engraved in a maple type wood effect in Japanese on the console in front of what looks to be a Japanese shoji screen. Uh, the game's title is also written in English on the touchpad of the DualShock 4. Thank you, Nano. So on Game Mania, it says Game pre-order, Mania. pre-order now and get free chopsticks from Sekiro. And did you receive the golden chopsticks upon receipt of the oh. pre-order benefit? Then you win a limited edition Shadows Die Twice. It's Shadows That Twice because Google Translate. Um, and it says one winner per country. But that can't be accurate. There's no way they're giving out a winner per every country on planet Earth. I don't believe that. I'm well, calling you Well, if you don't bluff. win, go to another country and, and try to do it from there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Spoof some IP addresses. <laughs> Ke- Kevin knows how to do this, I'm sure. No? Oh, sorry. I thought that seems like something that's up your tech and technical alley. You know what I'm I mean? I'm literally Googling how many oh, countries. No, he's winked There's at the 195 end. countries on planet Earth, Greg. Well. I highly doubt they made so 195. So let's dive back to EJ's <laughs> question of like, then why for the PlayStation 4, 500 million, whatever the hell it was, uh, a thing, why limit that, Andrea? Why not make an endless supply of those PlayStation 4s? Because they're incredibly expensive, and if they don't sell them, then what are they going to do with them? Yeah, that's the problem. EJ, you answer your own question. Yes, I get that they may cost more money to make, demand, etc. No, no, no. You can't accept a supply and demand. No. That's the thing of why these things are limited because, yes, they know that people are going to want them, but how many? And then what do you do when you have random PlayStation 4s sitting around that people didn't want? Guess give them to influencers like Greg Miller? Well, oh. I get those at the launch. All right? Don't worry about that. <laughs> Our PlayStation 4 limited edition clear one is in Kevin's house right now. Right, Kev? Hey, yeah. Yeah. I got to switch out my PlayStation 4 Pro at home for the Spider-Man one here. You really do. Because my PlayStation 4 Pro at home is just two seconds away from taking off. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, the Spider-Man is really cool. Like Spider-Man that. one's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm Take not taking it controller, away. too, though. Because was... I know you have matching controllers at your house. Yeah. But I feel like that controller... They got to go as a unit? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Blackjack! Blackjack! Wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says hey Greg and Andrew what's good a few days ago Amy Hedig uh, did an interview where she spoke about the challenges developers face when making a single player game to me her most interesting quote was one about live service games and she said quote all of those things I don't know the word I'm looking for but they play less nicely with story they're less conducive uh, conduct, um, they're less conducive uh, to traditional storytelling Personally, I couldn't agree with her more. Destiny Vanilla was very disappointing from a story perspective. Greg, I know you recently finished Anthem's campaign. What did you think of the story of Lack Thereof? Andrew, as a longtime Bioware fan, what are your thoughts on the way story is handled in Anthem now that you've had a chance to dig in? Which, of course, we talked about you didn't. Yeah, so this is the challenge that Anthem is facing is that they had to tell story in a very specific way. And I think it has been incredibly disruptive to being immersed in the narrative of the game, having to be partied up with someone. Even when we were playing together, when I'm like, oh, just wait a minute, I'm having a conversation in Fort Tarsus and then I'll get back and then we'll go on, on the next expedition. It's, difficult and really tough, especially when they design that to be a multiplayer game that you can play co-op from start to finish. Yeah. But you can't because we were talking about it on What's Good and Steinmar was talking about how she prefers to play solo so that she can take her time in Fort Tarsus going around talking to everybody at her leisure instead of having you know somebody on party chat being like, come on, ready up, let's yeah, go. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I think they're really discovering just how difficult it is to weave a meaningful narrative into a multiplayer focus game. I do want to pause here because I shouldn't have read this because we talked about Anthem at the front and I felt like we put a good pin in it and this is one of the things I want to talk about really what in the games cast. So we can review. just kick this to games cast. We're Kicking it to games, Cast Kev. Whoa. It's a free show, Blackjack. You'll enjoy it, I swear. And if you just want to hear that when you watch Games Cast and you don't pay for it, I guess. Well, you already pay for Patreon. You're get, just get it. It's there. It's there. Don't get worry about it. that. Uh, what I do <laughs> want to talk about is Alex Russ. Alex Russ wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says Ubisoft revealed their year one roadmap for the division two. I'm happy to see that this content is arriving in a free update, which helps to not gate out players who want new ways to play. However, they're still selling a $40 season pass to allow access a week early to content. Additionally, immediate access to specializations. Now I'm not one to complain about a free addition to a game I'm going to love, but it seems to me there really isn't too much incentive to get the season pass. Is there something I'm missing here? Or do you think that perhaps statistically the most hardcore players uh, were what brought in the most profit in the previous division to warrant the pay model 
perhaps they found that it's asking much in a very live service eco heavy ecosystem to charge an annual pass as a barrier to entry when players of these games often come and go between content drops. Why, Alex, it's funny that you asked this question. Oh! Because I asked this exact question to one Julian Garrity, the creative director at Massive Friend on the, show, the Division 2. Um, so I had the opportunity to sit down with him and um, talk to him several times over the last couple of days when I was in Washington, D.C. And I, and after they released, uh, announced this at the event and then you know they put out the subsequent mm-hmm. press release, I asked him the same question. And I was like, you know, like, how are you changing up what you're doing with the post-launch content, taking lessons learned from the first division. He said the biggest takeaway that they had from the division was they didn't want to split the community in post-launch releases. And so that's why all of the content is free. But obviously Ubisoft is still here to make money and they need to sell things. So they're obviously going to be selling in-game customizations and emotes and whatnot. Which they detailed uh, extensively too as well, right? Of like, hey, guess what? Yeah, you can buy stuff with real money. You can also unlock all this stuff in the game. But if you want you can buy it. Right. There's going to be loot boxes eventually, but guess what? You know what's going to be in them. You can also buy that stuff. You know what you're doing. Right, exactly. And I think that this new era of transparency and microtransactions is a step in the right direction, oh, yeah. most certainly. And I think, you know, when you talk about what's the motivation for spending the $40 to get the season pass, and I, it, this is clearly for people who are the die hard hardest core fans, right? Like a Greg Miller. I can't wait. Right? So you get the cool little backpack charms so yeah, and to customizations. So ch- yeah, to chime in, uh, looking at the image for the year one pass, right? I want to talk about what Alex is talking about. Sure. So yeah, you get seven days early access. To all three episodes. Right. So that's early access. Then there's eight classified assignments, which I assume are just for season pass holders. Do you know off the, what they said? I'm pretty sure they've got to be exclusive, right? Or they're just included in the price and maybe you'll be able to buy them individually. Like Something if you like only that, yeah. want the Three new specializations are going to be open to everyone, but what they say here is it's an instant unlock for the year, the pass holders. And then, yeah, there's more, which is classified assignment rewards, which are backpack trophies, uh, this agent ward outfit, a scout emote, and additional bounties and projects. So there is stuff in the past that is exclusive. However, what's not exclusive, what you get early access to is the episode, the DLC narrative content, right? That yeah. seems to be what they're giving you and so i'm 100 percent with you andrea that yeah this is just are you a super big fan of the division this goes back to what i was talking about in terms of how personally even when i do pay for a game but more likely than not when i get the game for review code and i'm having a great time in it usually if there's like a season pass and i'm having an awesome time i'm like you get it go for it i don't know if i'll ever touch it you know what i mean like witcher 3 we got review code awesome was so into that game and it was so amazing i was like I'm probably never going to do it, but let's do the season pass. Let's give that money too. And I think even for the games I do pay for when I do have to go buy a game, it works the same way of, yeah, Arkham Knight, right? It's a good example where we had, well, no, I guess we did get that game free. That's a bad example. But when you have to go through it and you have to go buy it, if I don't, if my, if if I, if I didn't get the, if I was just playing the division two and I'm a hundred hours in the division two, I'm going to be like, you know what? This is so much fun. There's the season pass. Yeah. I want you to have that 40 bucks. I think you've earned it. I do want all these little blings. I like one of my main things is I was upset. When I was in Canada, I was furious, right? Bonhomme, I just pounded on his chest, telling him how <laughs> upset I was that uh, I was missing the, uh, you know, the uh, closed beta for Division, right? Open beta's tomorrow, Greg. My fear was that if that I was going to miss some exclusive reward, like a oh, hat or a yeah, tank top like or whatever, a, right? Or something, and so, yeah. like, I'm for sure in this weekend, even though I hate, I, I love betas and I hate betas because I don't like spoiling it, but I like knowing stuff about games. Uh, I'm going to jump in there. For the hope that if on day one of Division 2, if there is some beta thing, I have it, that I want it. Because I, I want to have that goofy little thing. I want as many outfits as possible. The fact that they talk about it here in Division 2 of like, uh, yeah, there's going to be cosmetics for sale rather than, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're going to get a lot of money from me probably. Because I love, in the Division 1, I love changing my outfit so often. Fran and I would screw around every night doing different things. Right. So I think, yeah, that's where this comes down to is that, yeah, it is for the hardcore. It is this thing. For me, it is the exclusive items that is more interesting to me than the early access. Like I'm into the early access. I'm going to use it for sure, but it's not what's you know making or breaking it for me. Yeah. And I'm in the, in, in the Reddit trying to get the exact details on what is uh, exclusive and what's not, because I think that most of this stuff in the season pass, you'll be able to buy individually, but I think you get a discount by buying it in the season pass and you get it sooner. But okay. there's a there's a lot on this Reddit page about, <laughs> about the details. Um, so I urge you if you are concerned about it. But also, this is just like player choice. And I don't think that, as somebody pointed out in the Reddit, I don't think this is Ubisoft being scummy. I think this oh, is no, a, no. I think this is them saying, hey, we're giving you a lot of stuff for free this time around because we think that's the right thing to do. 
And I think this is the opposite of yeah, you scummy, Yeah, they're right? like, well, we still need to make some money for post-launch. And this is also the opposite of what we talked about with Anthem uh, when it came to PC early, right? You, we had a whole round and round on it with uh, Gamescast where you mm-hmm. were wrestling with this of... I love Anthem. I want to play Anthem. Why is PC getting it early? It's, we're paying the same thing. We're doing the same stuff, right? This is much more of what we talked about when we tried to compare it to Kind of Funny or What's Good, right? Where it's gating the access. It's like you're getting it all for free, but if you want to give us money, you get it seven days early. Right. Like you, you, there is there is an investment with an immediate reward rather than the same investment of everyone across the board and go that way. Uh, I have breaking news that isn't breaking, and I just missed it. Uh, I am blown away. B- uh, Barrett? We talked about, you know, oh, well, you come back for season eight, and I'm like, fuck no, sorry, Fortnite, Ape Out, Anthem, Uh, Division. What's up? Jeff Keighley on Twitter. Yeah? There is a new Weezer-themed island in Fortnite season eight, which is also playing the new album. Yeah. How did no one tell me about this? Barrett, what what do I fucking keep you around? It just went live. This is at 630. Barrett. You have two jobs here. Do all the social media for us and fucking follow Jeff Keighley <laughs> and tell me what he's saying. What? I rem- he helps with production like this. Three jobs. I remember reading it and I remember thinking of you. I'm sorry that I did not let you he, know. I hate he you. also edits some stuff. Shut up. You want, you want the Jeff Keighley responsibility? Give it to Kevin. Do kind it. Of. <laughs> Bobby Wasabi gets the final question of the day, writing into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, PAX East schedule and show floor map is up, and I noticed that there's no kind of funny panel this year. As a fan from New England, PAX East is the only event where I'm able to interact with the best friends and have been attending the kind of funny panel since the beginning. Sad to see it absent. Even if there's no panel this year, will Greg, Tim, or Andrew be going to East in any capacity? Here's the thing, Bobby Wasabi. No, kind of funny won't be there. Yes, Andrew will be there. We'll get to that one second. But I've been going, I think I've missed maybe one or two PAX East of all time. And so, no, this year we're spreading love and going to Kansas City as part of the kind of funny world tour. You say it yourself in there, right? Of like, I've been, I've been uh, going to the panel since the beginning, which is awesome when we thank you, but we need to see other people. There's other best friends who need to get out there and get some love. And that's why we're doing KC uh, at the end of the month instead. However, Andrew Renee and What's Good will be there. Is that correct? That is correct. We have a panel, What's Good Games Live, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. in the Bobcat Theater. We will be doing our meet and greet on Friday. Uh, still working out the official details, but please come by. We'll also be doing a community uh, D&D session that Ooh. you guys can come and watch, which should be uh, pretty fun. And yeah, we're, we have lots of stuff going on. So if you want to like keep up to date with where What's Good is going to be or where I will be, just at Andrew Renee on Twitter or What's Good underscore games. And of course, Andrea is kind of funny. So that counts as kind of funny being there. So go yeah. do that. And I'll go be to representing. All the Don't worry. And yeah, do it. And of course, this isn't us saying, fuck you, PAX. We'll be at, you know, PAX East again, I'm sure. Hopefully, we'll be at PAX West, obviously. But yeah, don't worry about it. But this is the year where we want to go to the places we haven't gone and see the people we haven't seen and had a chance. Not that I don't love going to Boston, going to Harpoon, but I got to I gotta get out there. I got I to gotta spread my wings and see other people, Kev. And I believe there's, it's not you, it's me. there's still like kind of funny fan groups that are doing their own Oh, yeah, there'll meetups. be kind of funny community meetups and stuff there, too. Yeah, so wear all your kind of funny gear. Uh, go over to... Who do I want to send from... Dev- I guess go to the Devolver booth and just flip over all their tables and be like, yeah. kind of funny was here, motherfuckers! No, don't, no, don't. If you no, have a do motorcycle, that. do a wheelie around them and then take oh, off. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, squad up! Time to squad up. This is where you go to patreon.com slash games. You submit your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Alex Russ needs help on the PlayStation. His PSN is zero underscore syndicate, and he writes angry Greg voice. That's right! I'm back, fighting game fans, and under night in birth is coming to Evo! Jesus. And it voice. So if you're curious about the game, want to learn it, or want to play it and need people to play against, feel free to reach out to me on PSN. Heck, I even stream my sessions if you want to check it out and ask questions. If you're okay with the stream plug, it's twitch.tv slash zero syndicate no underscore. So it's PSN zero syndicate underscore twitch.tv zero syndicate no underscore. Furthermore, I'll still duke it out in Dragon Ball Fighters and soon Mortal Kombat 11. I'm a mid-best boy and usually jump on at 8 p.m. Eastern on weekends and am usually open. All, oh, I'm sorry. 8 p.m. on weekdays. I'm usually open all weekend. If you want to play with Alex Russ and any of them there are nerdy fighting games, hit him up on PlayStation. Zero underscore syndicate. Andrea, 
Yes, Greg. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Uh, Goat Ruffles uh, has a clarification. Andrea commented on the PlayStation 4 being close to 90 million sold. As of December 31st, Sony estimated it has sold 91.6 million units. So you were right on the money. Yeah. Uh, Jor- mm, yeah, Jor- mm, Jorin? Jorin. Jorin's? <laughs> Jorin zigging out of that order. Uh, Del- uh, I missed that Delta Rune Chapter 1 is out today on Switch. It's the okay. prequel to Undertale. I didn't? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Barrett, for cutting me off, I guess. Jorin's Ignacio. It seems like it's Ignacio Rojas under another name, and mm. I don't like that one well, bit, but like that's what I do bit. it. Uh, no. No, because this was a pretty no. this was a pretty tame, nice comment. No. If, if it was Ignacio Rojas. True. It would be more like Nick Sox and be I hate more Kevin. Yeah, that's true, true. Nanobiologist says there are only two co- countries participating in the Sekiro contest, the Netherlands and Belgium. Therefore, there will only be two winners. That makes more sense. Um, Does that make more sense? I think I said that, nanobiologist, in some in, in a different way. Oh, Titan Meteor says today Ubisoft sent out an email that upon completing certain conditions, you will get cosmetics from Division Two Open Beta this weekend. Ooh. Looks like I know what I'm doing. Kevin, call Jen. Tell her all our plans are canceled. Um. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. If you didn't know, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can watch us record it live. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. You can watch it later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or RoosterTeeth.com. And you can listen on podcast services around the globe. Tomorrow, Frantham himself, Fran Mirabella, swings by to do the show with me. This is the Frantham. Throw all your friends up. Uh, We're going to get ready to do Debatable (laughs) Live right now where Andrea Renee will face off against me in the top 10 pop stars and Johnny Ace will be there. God help us. So if you missed that, watch it later on YouTube. He might get slapped in the face. Who could say? I'm very close to doing it. I've been thinking about it. (laughs) Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.